If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenerolf, here with another deck tech for you, one that I came up with. You've probably seen something similar to this before, but not quite like this. It is completely unrelated to Noble Hierarch. Shoutouts to TJ, by the way, for the Noble Hierarch playmat. I really appreciate it. The one that Paul gave to me, I gave back to him because I didn't know that I was going to be playing Magic when I got around to Clarksville. Uh, and so I gave it back to him, and then TJ gets me one because he's a good guy too. He's a really good guy. So this is a rat deck tech, a tribal rat deck tech, but I like to call it Cloudstone Rats. Why Cloudstone? Well, sneak preview is because of Cloudstone Curio. But we'll get to that in just a quick moment. Uh, so let's start off with the rats themselves. We have uh, Typhoid Rats. I mean, little one drop death touch, one one. That's all you need to know. Also, got an SCG open. It's exactly what's written on the tin. You have it to block, you know, it, it keeps you alive, that sort of thing. Uh, this does actually have a nice little synergy with the land that we have in the deck. Uh, giving regenerate to a death touch creature it may seem kind of silly, it may seem kind of ridiculous, and that's because it is. Uh, the next one that we have on here is Pack Rat for Value. Because this card is very good, if any card should be limited in limited, it should be, well, first of all, when was Gita. Second of all, Pack Rat. Mr. I open one Pack Rat. I'm just going to put in 39 swamps and a Pack Rat and see how I do. And just mulligan to Pack Rat. That was a thing. For those of you that didn't play Limited, that didn't draft or seal back in uh, Return to Ravnica, yeah, that was a thing. You could legitimately do that. Uh, next, we have Ravenous Rats. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. That is actually really important. It's a, it's just a 1-1, one, one, so the 1-for-1 one one usually is just, I make my opponent discard a card. The fact that it's a 1-1, one, one, it's not big enough to make that much of a difference on it on its own most of the time. We get into some silly little shenanigans with it later. And yes, that is one weakness of the tribal. We are talking about a pretty weak tribe. A lot of one power, one toughness going on here. We'll work on that in just a moment. We do, after all have uh, a lord in here, a rat lord. But next, you know what's better than making them discard a card? Making it, <laughs> making them put it back on top of their deck. This is Time Walk Rat. This is Chittering Rats. This is a Pauper All-Star. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3. This is a common! This is a common! Alright, so, that's all well and good. This is our lord, Adaptive Automaton. Now, importantly, it's not a rat until it enters the battlefield, so Cavern of Souls won't do us any work with it, but plus one plus one to all creatures that share it, a type with it, and you make it a rat when it enters the battlefield, so it's a rat lord. It's a whatever lord for three. Next we have... Now, those are all four ofs, I should note. This is our four of club, so 20 creatures right here. These are all one ofs. I have one Nizumi Shortfang. This may need to be more. I'm trying it out just as one of, though. We have one Nizumi Grave Robber for reanim- oh yeah, they're flips, I should note. <laughs> I should flip them over, make it a little easier on you. Alright, so Nizumi Shortfang uh, trans- or flips, not transforms, by tapping it and paying one in black to make them discard a card, so that's fine, it's repeatable discard, uh, but if they have no cards in hand afterwards, it flips into, um, Black Vice, I think? No, not Black Vice. The Rack. There we go. It flips into a 3-3 Rack. It gets a 3-3 Rack. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, next, Nizumi Grave Robber. So, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard, and because we're making this, them discard, that should happen fairly frequently. Uh, if they have no cards left in their graveyard, flip it. So... In this game, that isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world, what with all of the uh, you know, uh, fetch lands and 
people filling their graveyards for Dell, that sort of thing. But if you can manage it, if they're, they're not that kind of deck, then you get a 4-2 that can reanimate cards from their graveyard. So that's nice and fun. That's uh, certainly something that I don't want it as more than a one of because it's dead against a lot of decks. It's dead against Jund and Junk and decks that are filling their own graveyard intentionally. Uh, but if that happens not to be the case, then you can get a 4-2 beater as soon as turn 3. And it can reanimate their cards in the late game. Speaking of late game, we have two big cards. We have one Marinar, it's sort of another lord. Although, instead of giving plus one, plus one, it just grants them fear. Just grants fear. This is our, um... Oh, what was the name of that four-drop goblin from somewhere in Ravnica Block that taps to double the number of goblins? It puts in goblin tokens equal to the number of goblins you have. Oh, pff, why can't I think of its name? It'll come to me. In any case, it's that, but for rats. And also, you have to sacrifice a rat in order to uh, not quite double, so it's... Open parentheses, x minus 1, close parentheses, times 2. And that's on the screen. That's how many rats you get every time you use it. And lastly, we have a 1 of Inkai's Servant of Oni. It costs 6, but with ninjutsu it costs 5, so... It costs 5. When it deals combat damage to a player, you can put target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So another reanimate effect, this one regenerates itself, it doesn't need Swarm Yard. It's a 5-4, and it returns one of your rats to your hand, which is important because you can reuse their discard effects. I only have these as one-ofs. In their case, it's because, or cases rather, it's because I don't want to have too many high-curve cards in a format like this. Although our discard, our gratuitous amounts of discard, can slow the game down, I don't want to go too hard into that simply because, of course, it is modern. <laughs> the games are not likely to go that far. But in case they do, I have an answer. I have something that I can do that gives me some sense of inevitability rather than just being low to the ground and losing in the late game every time. Now, I said that this was a Cloudstone Curio deck, and that's true. We have three Cloudstone Curio, and we also have four Aether Vial. So Aether Vial is really hot in a tribal deck like this, in a low-to-the-ground deck like this. It just lets you reuse your mana, essentially. Uh, not reuse your mana. Uh, it almost serves as a... it does kind of serve as a ramp spell. Uh, frees up your mana for playing more creatures or control elements like our disruption cards uh, I'm about to get to. But there's a combo here, too, and this is what I don't see come out of rat decks. Uh, any other rat decks that I've seen, at least. The combo is actually really simple. You take, for the sake of our, for the sake of making this example easy, we're going to use a ravenous rats and a chittering rats, and an aether vial. Uh, let's actually it'd be even easier. Let's say we have it on pack uh, pack rat and ravenous rats. They're the same mana cost, so this will be easier. So we play the Ravenous Rats, that's fine, we make them discard. There's an Aether Vial out on two, and a Cloudstone Curio. Well, at some point, we play the Pack Rat to return Ravenous Rats to hand, thanks to Curio. And when our opponent has no cards in hand, and they go to their draw step, we tap Aether Vial, flash in the Ravenous Rats, and make them discard before they get to their main phase. In other words, before they can play it, unless it's an instant or it has flash. And we can... Uh, with the Cloudstone Curio out, and the Ravenous Rat having come into play, return the Pack Rat, and we can do this again and again and again and again. You see where this is going. We can lock them out of their draw step. But what you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, they can actually get out of this, right? If they happen to have, a, I mean, we're just making a discard, so eventually they'll draw into a Lightning Bolt, a Dismember, a Path to Exile, so on and so forth, and they'll hit the creature. Well, that's fine. That's certainly true. They could do that. Counterspells won't get them out because we're flashing them in with Aether Vial. But let's say that they do have a way to get out. Well, if we replace these cards, Pack Rat and Ravenous Rats, with, say, Chittering Rats and Adaptive Automaton. Now, with an Aether Vial on two and one on three, we could just 
bounce back and forth between these guys as well. But I called this Time Walk Rat for a reason. Again, Chittering Rats is out, made them put something back on top. We play the Adaptive Automaton and return Chittering Rats to hand. And then with Aether Vial on three, we flash it in on their draw step. This time, they put it back on top of their deck. And when they draw it next time, we do the same thing. And so on and so forth. They'll never draw a different card, unless that happened to be an instant or a card with flash, then they'll keep drawing until they get to a card that isn't an instant or one with flash, say, land. That's a, that's a new meaning of getting land screwed, I suppose. That's the combo in this deck. That's what we're trying to set up. We lock the opponent out of being able to play the game by stopping them on their draw step. So if that sounds like the kind of deck that you would want to play, well, here you go. <laughs> uh, next, we have our removal suite. I run Ford Dismember, just a good removal spell, obviously. Doesn't have to be black, but this is a black deck, we get more use out of it, we might as well. And in fact, is a thing in my meta. Cruel Edict. Now, after Dismember, what removal spell do we go and get next? Well, because we have a difficult, we have a strong enough amount of colorless mana in the deck, I'm not wanting to run, say, Geth's Verdict or Victim of Night, although those would certainly work. I want to play something that's black and colorless. So cards like Cruel Edict, or if you want instant speed, say Devour Flesh, but why? Or, let's see, Smother, Go for the Throat. They all have their own weaknesses. This one fights Bogles, and... You know, it, it is sorcery speed, but it's unconditional otherwise. This is the kind of card that, you know, Smother won't work on all creatures, Go Through Throat won't work on all creatures, Ultimate Price won't work on all creatures, uh, Doomblade, so on and so forth. This is unconditional, except that they will take the one that's uh, best for them. They will, if they have more than one creature, they'll just take whichever one does the least damage to them. So, all of them have a price, that's one issue with playing black kill spells in modern. There's no innocent blood. Uh, our creatures are too weak to play something like Wretched Banquet. You get the idea. Now, we have our fair lady. Now, if you're wondering, well, why don't you just play Liliana? Uh, this, uh, the similarity between Cruel Edict and Liliana the Veil cannot be ignored, right? They are both edicts, so there is certainly that. And, admittedly, I would run more Lilianas. I actually don't even have one to my name. Uh, if you put this in 1080p, you will almost certainly see Proxy, 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 Proxy. <laughs> even cheap cards. I don't have that many cards to my name left. So, that is not a real Liliana, obviously. And obviously the Typhoid Rats is real, but that's... and Ravenous Rats. I don't make foil proxies. <laughs> so I apologize for that, by the way, but yeah, uh, at least one, because it is effectively legendary. The Planeswalker rule does kick in and make it where we can't have too many, right? Uh, we could run four. It is good, to be sure. I'm not sure that this is the kind of deck that wants to run four. If you add more, just take out Cruel Edict. Easy enough, right? Um, yeah, so this is the kind of deck that makes them discard like crazy, and in that sense, Lilian is great. Liliana, however, with her plus, she starts out when you just play her for three mana. She's a minus one. You used a card, obviously. Every time you use her plus, she maintains that minus one. Because while your opponent is discarding a card, you are not discarding a card. Now, in a lot of decks, that's fine, because you're discarding for Gurmog Angler, or Tassiger, or you're discarding Lingering Souls, or you're making your Tarmogoyf bigger, so on and so forth. You get use out of it. This is not the deck that gets any good use out of that, to be sure, unfortunately. Um, that being the case, she might still be better, if for no other reason than that she's repeatable creature kill. Edict plus Edict, and you've gotten the... she's broken... actually, she hasn't broken even. She's a plus one at that point. Next we have four Swarm Yard. This is our land. <laughs> this is the rat land. Regenerate target rat. Good with death touch, good with all of these, all of these rats. It just keeps them alive for longer. Speaks for itself. Uh, and then two Mutavolts. 
You could play Cavern of Souls. I'm not sure that I like it as much as Mutavault in the match, although I have played it before. It doesn't work on, that is to say Cavern, doesn't work on Adaptive Automaton, because when you cast it, it's a construct, not a rat. I also like just having more beaters and ones that do get a plus from Adaptive, and that does get the fear from Marinar. Uh, and it does benefit from giving you another rat with Marinar, so on and so forth. You get the idea. This is uh, obviously a good card. I think that this is better than Cavern in the match, or in the deck rather, at least as constructed. And now for sideboard. I have six unique cards in here. I start out with a Graveyard Hate, three Nile Spell Bombs. You can argue Relic of Progenitus is better. Against Tarmogoyf it certainly is. And maybe that's where we need to be instead. This one lets me, uh, if I absolutely need to, I can pop it without having to pay that extra one mana in order to remove their whole graveyard. Um, maybe this should be Relic though. Feel more than free to disagree with me putting in Nile. I run four Rotting Rats. These used to be in the main board. Why aren't they in the main board now? Well, the same issue with Liliana occurs here. Unfortunately, Rotting Rats, you play it, that's one, and then it makes each player discard a card. So while they discard, you do two. It's a minus one when you play it. And you can argue, well, maybe it's a two for two, but since the Rotting Rat itself is only a one-one, it's usually not enough. And so I keep these in the sideboard. Why? Well, I use it against combo decks for two reasons. One, it's more discard. In the match, I will usually take out uh, two, or like take out Ink Eyes, Marinar, and two Adaptive Automaton, and put in four Rotting Rats. And the reason, beyond just being another beater, obviously I'm taking out creatures, so that being a beater isn't that big a deal, it is discard and for all of these really tight combo decks, they need every card they can get, but also, it doesn't target a player. And that's important because decks like Ad Nauseam play Leyline of Sanctity. This will give me a way to make them discard, even if we don't have, or even if they do have, rather, Leyline of Sanctity. Now, if I try to go for the Aether Vile Cloudstone Curio combo I mentioned before, Ravenous Rats won't work, Chittering Rats won't work, but Rotting Rats will. And remember, it's only Rotting Rats and any other rat, hopefully a two-drop, but any other rat will do that. So we can lock them out, even though they're a combo deck. We can just every turn do it over and over again. Uh, another neat little trick while I'm thinking about it, by the way, with Nizumi Shortfang, let's say that you don't want it to flip. I mean, it's, it's certainly understandable why you would want it to. It's a 3-3 that deals them damage passively. But for whatever reason, say you want to keep making them discard, uh, you don't want it to flip, so you flash something in, or just play anything, so let me start over. Tap it, paying the one in black, and then flash in something with Aether Vial and its uh, trigger on, or its ability on the stack, so obviously you're holding priority to play the Aether Vial. Drop anything, and then return it to hand with Cloudstone Curia. It's no longer on the field to flip, but they'll still have to discard. And then you can just play it right back and scrub, rinse, repeat. That's an argument for having more than just one. Although, again, usually you'd rather have it flip. Uh, next, we have two smothers, just as more creature kill. We have aggro matches, or even some mid-range matches, because it kills Tarmogoyf. It kills Knight of the Reliquary, Lockstone Smiter, so on and so forth. Loxodon Smiter. Now that's a card we worry about, about which we worry. Uh, sudden Death. Infect, and the blue X tempo decks, this gives us a way to kill the creature without them being able to counter it, and Infect can't uh, protect the creature in response. Although we do have four Dismembers and four Cruel Edicts and a Liliana of the Veil, and all of our Discard and Typhoid Rats, this gives us something else that we can do against them. And again, we can play this in response now that all the Kiki chords, uh, chord decks are around. We can play this in response to, uh, rest you know, Restoration Angel trying to blink a Kiki or something like that. You get the idea. Uh, next we have, let's see, how many would this be? This is two Thought Seas, that's right, two Thought Seas, just to shore up the combo match. And then I have three Vampire Nighthawks. 
What are you doing here? Well, there's not much that we do against burn, actually. And so this will kill all of their creatures, at least as far as blocking goes. Uh, and it has... Well, okay, so it has three toughness, so it won't die against, say, an Eidolon of Great Revels, a Goblin Guide, a Monastery Swift Spear. It won't die, barring double prowess on Swift Spear, in which case it's probably dead anyway. It has lifelink to get us back in the game, and this will, you know, obviously it can not survive Lightning Bolt, but this draws one of their burn spells away from it, hopefully for just long enough. It gives us something else to do in the match. It also goes in against uh, mid-range and aggro decks where we just need more death touch. We need to kill more of their creatures. I bring it in against Zoo. I bring it in against Burn, as I said. I would bring it in against Tarmogoyf decks because our creatures are so small that barring Typhoid Rats and some other source of death touch, there just isn't a lot that we're doing. We rely on stopping the opponent through the mid-game by making them discard and discard and discard oh, in Time Walk. And we kill their creatures, the few that we hope that they have, um, once we get into the mid-game or early game, and then we just keep hitting them with teeny tiny little rats. Um, and that's it. That's what we're up to. That's the deck. So a 15-card sideboard, 60-card deck. I, I should note, obviously there are swamps in the rest of this, but just in case that weren't obvious, uh, the other 14 are swamps. So it's 20 lands. Let's see, I have 24 creatures in the main board, 16 non. The Aether Vial is super, super sick. The Aether Vial and Cloudstone Curio is super hot. That's exactly where you want to be. Uh, being able to lock them out of their draw step is... It's nice to be able to play an aggro, a tribal deck, and a prison deck, which when you get the combo set up, it certainly can be. Uh, now that being the case, I have set up a nice little triangle here, and the playmat cuts off right there, so I apologize all of you 13 year old boys. Alright, now, <laughs> I had to. I felt I had to. Thank you for watching Magic Community on YouTube. I will try to get in more deck techs, and if possible, I will try to get in some games with this revised, this updated version of the deck. I'll do that as soon as I can. Unfortunately, uh, now that the card shop, the missing piece, has burned down, and I don't get to tap start all that often, it isn't too close, I don't get to play modern as much as I used to. Um, I will see if I can get um, my bro- oh, sorry about that. I will see if I can get my brother into it. Uh, I'll see if I can get TJ to come around again, and he and I can play some games. TJ, I want to get some Vintage in against you. I have my Vintage Proxy deck. You have your Vintage Proxy deck. Let's do this. We can do this. The people want some Vintage, right? No. Maybe. Maybe. Eh. He has Vintage Dredge. It's pretty miserable to play against. I'm probably going to lose. It's pretty exciting to watch, I have to admit. All right. Take care, everybody, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.